Santa Claus, Saint Nick, Father Christmas, the old guy with the instantly recognizable red hat. You know him, you love him, but sometimes when he's not doling out gifts to good boys and girls for the holidays, he's actually incredibly evil. And this is a list of the best Santa and Santa-like figures who are not nice on the naughty list, getting coal in their stockings, potentially robots programmed to destroy us all. Evil Santa stories get really weird. Ready? Ho, 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 here we go. Obviously, the reverse Flash equivalent of Santa Claus, the Krampus, has got to be on the list. Not just because he's got evil jack-in-the-boxes and evil gingerbread men, not just because he lets monster clowns get involved, but most of all, because my dude locks families up in snow globes like it's sane elsewhere. That's just messed up. There are a lot of evil Santas in the Silent Night, Deadly Night franchise. There's the Santa who kills two parents in their car. There's the parents' first kid, Billy, who plants a topless girl on some reindeer antlers. But most of all, there's Ricky, the other brother, from Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, the best worst Santa of the whole franchise because even if you never realized you heard of Ricky or even that franchise, you absolutely know his classic Christmas catchphrase. Carpet day! Huh? No! Ah. You know the song Santa Claus is coming to town? He sees you when you're sleeping, knows when you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, etc. Well, that's creepy on its face, let's just be real. But just imagine if the guy who is doing all that stuff isn't Santa Claus, but just some dude. And that is Christmas evil. Harry is a guy who is obsessed with Santa because he saw his mom have sex with Santa as a kid. I mean, it was his dad dressed as Santa, but Harry never figures it out somehow. So he becomes a murderer instead. John Waters called this the greatest Christmas movie ever made. It definitely involves a homicidal maniac flying away in his murder van, so... I mean, John Waters, you're probably right. Now, Doctor Who does a Christmas episode every year. One episode, they even had Santa Claus save the Doctor and Clara from aliens. But before that, they were evil robot Santas from planet... wherever. They started the Doctor Who Christmas tradition with their horn guns and their killer Christmas trees, and one of them was something so terrifying, it chilled me to the bone. A bad cab driver gave this New Yorker nightmares for weeks. All right, the Grinch is a bad, bad Santa in that his heart ultimately grows three sizes and when he becomes nice, he slices the roast beef for all the who's down in Whoville, but he did originally dress as Saint Nick, stealing all the gifts, the food, and decoration from the who's. And on this list, that still counts for something. Even if the Grinch does botch the dismount. That's, um, that's how I'm supposed to read the ending of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, right? That the Grinch messed up, right? It's normal reading. Here's a good rule of thumb. If you are an invading alien from another planet, don't let one of your schemes be create a Robo Santa suit for you to wear so you can take over Christmas. That's what happens in the Invader Zim episode, The Most Horrible Christmas Ever. And the result is that Zim gets taken over by the sentient Santa suit, which in turn transforms into a candy cane spider monstrosity. Plus side, you do get a good Christmas jingle out of the ordeal. So that's nice. Santa Claus gets shot and killed by Steve Smith on American Dad, but he comes back to life, and then he's just kind of a dick about it from then on. Even the Krampus turns out to be a dude who's just trying to show kids some tough love before Santa blows him away. Santa also kidnaps and enslaves children in an effort to find gemstones so he can awaken an ancient Sumerian giant named Humbaba. Don't worry though, the giant eats him. And that's a Christmas miracle if ever I heard. 
How to Explain Space Ghost Coast to Coast. It's a show in which recycled footage from old Hanna-Barbera cartoons is used as a vehicle to interview celebrities. The host is Space Ghost. He's a ghost from space. I, I don't think his backstory is ever really explained. So it's Space Ghost, right? And his co-host, the evil space mantis, some kind of tiki cat, and then this guy who's in a volcano cave. Anyway, in the episode Girl Hair, Space Ghost interviews Hanson. You remember Hanson. And while on the search for a comb to brush their long, luxurious hair, Space Ghost accidentally kills the Tooth Fairy. And that's when, you're waiting for it, Santa Claus shows up. It's not really Santa Claus, it's actually Bizarro Santa, and he wants to use the Tooth Fairy's teeth to make monstrous toys for children. And also, he's a giant monster. Oh, and the Tooth Fairy isn't really dead, so Bizarro Santa and the Tooth Fairy, who is obviously from the Flintstones, fight with lasers and lightning. So all takes place in the span of about two minutes, by the way. Two very memorable, once you've seen it, you can never unsee it. I've been in therapy about this for years, but nothing helps. Minutes. Meanwhile, this just in from video games from the 90s were messed up. In the Super Nintendo classic, Secret of Mana, you have to fight this giant boss monster called a Frost Gigas, who, first of all, takes a really long time to beat. Second of all, turns you into a snowman, and third of all, turns out, is Santa Claus. Now, why did Santa become a monster, you might ask? Because kids stopped believing in him. So you see that, kids? Santa is real. And if you don't believe in him, we will all die. But hands down, the best evil Santa of them all hails from the 31st century, where he lives on the planet Neptune in his death fortress, looking down below upon his enslaved Neptunian elves. He leaves only bodies and destruction in his wake, and his only allies are Kwanzaabot and the Hanukkah zombie I speak, of course, of Futurama's Robot Santa Claus. Between his nigh-impossible standards for what constitutes being nice, his unholy brutal rampages which typify the dystopian Christmases of the future, and of course, his paradox absorbing crumple zones. Truly, there is no stronger contender for greatest evil Santa of them all. Take a bow, you crimson mayhem from hell. You earned it. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I hear the pitter-patter of reindeer hooves on my roof. Santa's here, and only one of us is going to make it out of this studio alive. Merry Christmas!